And then we wanted to have this, like our traditions or establish these American traditions. So we literally would buy presents, buy Christmas wrapping paper. That's the, that's the power of what this movie has the capability of doing that so many people don't know or yeah. not aware of. And so being a bully in the movie gave me permission to be the, the asshole that I never had the ability to do. Yeah, let's go. So let's all go. you guys keep your eyes out for the podcast, Talking a Christmas Story with the cast, because we've got episodes galore coming. We've got celebs coming. We've got all kinds of really fun stuff. Welcome, folks, to another major award edition of Talking a Christmas Story with the cast. I'm your host, Yano Anaya. And yes, I'm the same rascal who played Gover Dill in the movie. That pint-sized little bully with a bark as big as his bite. Today we have a special treat. A guest whose story is as rich as the threads that make up the well-loved Christmas sweater. Our guest is Donald Kelly, the top dog of the studio that helps bring this very podcast to life each week. Donald's journey from the sunny shores of Jamaica to frosty, nostalgic world. You know, there's something uniquely magical about the holiday season. It is time when the air is thick with nostalgia and the world seems to slow down just enough for us to catch our breath and savor the little things. Here amongst the A Christmas Story family, we believe that these cherished moments belong in every month and every day of the year and in every place around the world. Now imagine, if you will, waking up on Christmas morning to the sound of palm trees rustling in a warm breeze. That's where our story begins today. Donald Kelly grew up in Jamaica, and in this interview, he talks about what Christmases were like for him back home. Needless to say, Christmas traditions here in the United States were new to the family when they first arrived here in the U.S. Little did they know, Donald and his brother would stumble upon a Christmas story, the movie that would become a cornerstone of their yearly traditions. And it continues to inspire the festivities he now celebrates with his own family. You see, no matter where we come from, our connections and bonds are formed through the times that we share. And it is such an amazing gift to me and to other members of the cast that we got to play a major role in that. And speaking of connections, let's not forget that our guest today is not just a fan, but also the host of the Sales Evangelist podcast and one of the brilliant minds behind the scenes of the show that you're listening to right now. Today, the spotlight is on Donald Kelly, and we'll be turning the tables as Donald asks me about my own experiences as Grover Dill. What makes this interview particularly special is we got to record it at TSE Studios in South Beach, Florida, in person instead of over Zoom, which was a blast. So let's get right into it. Welcome to the show, Donald. It is it is excited. It is exciting for me to actually have you on this show. There's, there's a, uh, there's been a lot of communication that we've had a lot about what it is that we do, what it is that you do. Um, I'd like to talk about, um, the excitement behind the initial conversation that you have with my business partner, Emmanuel Soba, about what it is that we do. Yeah. Um, and then we'll kind of get into what it is that you do as well. So, Tell me about um, the first conversation that you had with my business partner and then what it is that we do. <laughs> so I remember um, it was like it was two months ago now or something like that. I was uh, talking to – I got, this, I got a, uh, one of the leads that came in and it was uh, Emmanuel. And I'm like, okay, Emmanuel, sounds cool, dude. And we started talking just like any other lead. And then we were rapping about like the podcast and what he's doing with the podcast and how this podcast is, you know, he said something about a Christmas story. And I'm like, what are you talking about? A Christmas story. I'm like, you know, you know, part of a Christmas story. I don't remember seeing you in the movie. <laughs> and then, um, and then he was, uh, he said, um, I think you were on the screen. You came on the screen and then he was like, does he look familiar? And I was like, no. No way. <laughs> this is, a, and I was like, is this the bully? <laughs> so you actually recognize. So yeah. when he triggered you with that yeah. movie, A Christmas Story. Of course, when I came on the screen, it registered with you? Yeah, it, it clicked. Cause I mean, I mean, I saw, I started seeing the resemblance a little bit. Okay. Because uh, after he said it and then seeing the, uh, the video um, of you a little bit, I was like, no way, this is not real. And um, being able to connect with you. And then literally on that call, I my brother works with me. So um, we, uh, I, was, I was like, Jermaine, <laughs> Jermaine, come into the office here. And I, I think you remember when I called him in um, from his room. 
So he's actually in the room today recording with us, <laughs> producing. That's amazing. Do you remember that, Jermaine? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I remember that. So, you know, um, for me personally, yes, we had started a Christmas or talking with the Christmas story with the cast as a podcast um, for a very specific mission and reason. And that's to acquire everybody from in front of the scenes, everybody from behind the scenes so that we can create a place that has a digital platform for all the fans, for everybody to have a historical place to go to, to really kind of understand the history of the movie, yeah. understand, you know, what actors are doing today, just to kind of bring the nostalgia into the living room. Right. Yeah. Uh, and also through the headphones, since a lot of people don't watch the YouTube channel, which I encourage everybody to get to the YouTube channel to watch the actual video because there's a lot of really subscribe. cool stuff. Yeah, subscribe <laughs> and hit that bell notification. So um, <clears throat> when you recognized me, yeah. it's because it's far few in between that people actually recognize who I am, um, which for me, I love because yeah. I can go into public and I can go to the grocery store and I can do things that people don't recognize me yet, right? Yeah. Because, you know, we're getting to that point where we've got more exposure going on. Um, and when you recognize me, that that brings a lot of joy to me because mm. now I understand that you have been watching this movie a lot because it resonated with you. So I always love to ask the personal question to fans when was it that you watched this first movie and then why has it been kind of a family tradition in your life? So we grew up in Jamaica and we moved to the States when we were, I was, I was nine and okay. my younger brother was, I think came when it's like, well, like five or something like that. So, um, is younger. Um, and then, um, so our family in Jamaica, you have like your own traditions, like the tra tradition in Jamaica, you're more of like uh, a lot of party, like you're, you're, people are gonna party on Christmas or you may have like a, you know, you have a big dinner, Christmas. Big celebrations, so, yeah. Huh? But like the, the traditional stuff that you find here in the States, like you're watching like, um, you know, family watching a movie together or something like that, or you're going and, you know, caroling or go cut down a Christmas tree. You ain't got that in Jamaica. Mm. You ain't gonna cut down a Christmas tree. Like okay. I, I can, I don't even much re remember us, I think vaguely, um, a few times putting up a Christmas tree, but mm. more so Christmas decorations. Mm. So you would have people decorate their house, they'll paint their homes, they'll put up lights and things like that. But a Christmas tree, I don't think we really had that in the presents exchange. We didn't really have, but it was more of like the party and the celebration and family coming to visit. Now, fast forward, when we came to the United States now, we didn't have those same traditions that we were doing. Right, right. So um, I remember Jermaine and I, we were watch like TV and I can't remember when it was first came on because it was like, uh, I think I first started watching was like, you know, TNT, I think had it, the Turner, Turner's had yep. um, the access to it. So like we saw it and I remember it, it would advertise it like forever, like just always advertised like, you know, a Christmas story, a Christmas story. So it's like, we got to, I got to at least watch this and I watch it. And it was like, so this is like in your, you know, the like, um, Late and uh, late nineties, late nineties, yeah. So it was like, okay, it's so more of like an eighties movie. I was thinking maybe mm. like a Wonder Year type stuff. So okay, you know uh -huh. what I mean, like because so uh -huh. we all watch Wonder Year. So I was like, all right, that kind of nostalgic idea. So watched it, and then um, the first time, and then they had the twenty four hour started because mm. I think the first time we watched it, it didn't have twenty four hour. They had it on a couple times, but then they got okay. into this like idea of going to twenty four hour Christmas story, and then they started. We started watching that like, bro, it would be. It would the TV would be on set, and that was like one of our first like real traditions that we started saying that we're gonna watch it, um, and then you know we'd sit down and watch it, watch it like multiple times, and it's like, you know, it's like what are you gonna learn the second time you watch it? But you always found something more entertaining mm. with it, or you found your 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 scenes that you liked the most or whatnot. Um, so we we always that was one of our traditions, and then we had like. Um, we did do our own. So you, what I'm getting at, we started forming our own traditions with it. And the Christmas tree, um, my mom, we got a, you know, like one of the artificial Christmas trees. But again, we didn't, my mom didn't establish those same Christmas pra practices that you probably would have okay. when you were, you know, like you probably you had as a kid. So what she did with us, she would take us to like family dollar. And then she was like, you got like 10 bucks. Uh, what do you guys want? And we would get our own presents. And then we wanted to have this, like our traditions or establish these American traditions. So we literally would buy presents, buy Christmas wrapping paper. We wrapped our own presents 
and we put them under the tree. We know darn well exactly what it is. That's just a remote control car from Family Dollar. But we would buy it, and we had our own, um, and we wrapped it, and that was just a part of it. So we know when we open up our presents, like late night, that night, uh, Christmas Eve, Christmas Story is going to start. So we're going to watch that. We're going to watch it in the morning. We're going to play with our toys. We're going to go outside, hang out with the friends, um, and we could come back in. So that that traditional that tradition started for us. And even now with my kid, um, he's four, uh, going on five. So we'll watch it. And even last year, so we have our certain movies now that we watch. And uh, they don't do, they still do 24 hours, I think, um, sometimes, uh, depending on the channel. But what we did, we um, we have streaming, so we get that. Mm-hmm. But then last year, HBO had the new one. Mm-hmm. So then we introduced him to that, and he was watching that as well. So it was just, it was cool um, to start seeing how this is going multi generational now. Yeah. Um... Your story is amazing. Like Donald, I, I I don't I don't know if you really realize that what your story is from moving from Jamaica here, yep. not necessarily having the kind of traditions that, you know, the United States has developed around, you know, lights and trees and ornaments and this whole to do around creating this day for their children. But yet your mom was willing and open about doing things because it obviously brightened your lives up. <laughs> it gave you more things to do, more things to look forward to. And I'm going to say that there's probably millions of people out there that never even knew that this kind of family tradition formation is even possible. And that's because it wasn't in their 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 life, their experience. Yeah. So, you know, I, I want you to know that just by expressing what your family experience was with your brother, or with your mom, because if it wasn't for your mom, you wouldn't have had this experience, right? So mm-hmm. she's the one that initiated the process because, yeah, okay, money might have been difficult, but at least you had a budget and at least you can <laughs> go do things. And, you know, it's the excitement of picking your own paper out and picking your own ribbons and picking your own presents. I mean, that is amazing in itself outside of not knowing and then just writing a list to Santa Claus and expecting what you want to get. You know what I mean? So... Um, man, that's, that's a very, very touching story, like uh, seriously, it, because the movie has now allowed the opportunity to be in your life. And, and it's that connection between what your mom did. Does your, is your mom a fan too? Does your mom like watch the movie or does she hate it? Like, I don't know if she's, a, she... I, don't, I think she's neutral. She just like, she was just, she was just be like annoyed that we watched this movie okay. like, forever. Like okay. she just know she, there's no way the TV in the living room was going to be changed. Like it didn't matter. Like the TV right. in the living room was going to be on it. And then she may have yelled at us and, yeah. you know, you're still watching this, but we would, in, in our bedroom, we had our little setup and okay. we would have, yeah. it would just, it was just on. Like yeah. it didn't stop. So, <laughs> and you know, you know, it also resonates a lot is that that experience created a whole different type of bond with your brother mm. that a lot of people don't have with their family. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes, there was there was Ralphie and there's Randy, how they were just their crazy little brothers and you know what I mean? And you got the little brother and he's always on your ass and you know what I mean? And and that that kind of experience, which I'm sure probably resonated with you as you having a little brother and you being the bigger brother with the responsibility and so on and so forth. But <clears throat> you know, that that whole process of the experience that you had in creating something that you didn't have that now you do and now how long has it been 20 years 25 years oh later my goodness you yeah know what i mean and yeah. now you're sharing that with your children i mean for me man that's the that's the power of what this movie has the capability of doing that so many people don't know or yeah. not aware of so your story is is an amazing story to be able to share with people so so thank you for doing that no, and I appreciate it. And I think that one of the other parts that I like about like the nostalgia, nostalgia of the movie or nostalgic experience with the movie is going back to that, that traditional stuff again, the traditions again. And I, I remember with like uh, even selecting the Christmas tree. Uh, that scene from the mm-hmm. movie mm-hmm. where Ralphie went with his dad and you know so forth to go select a tree. Like we didn't we didn't have real trees. We had artificial trees, yeah. right? Um, and then I remember when we went to um, the lot for the first time to go buy our own tree. Um, and we didn't have any. We were in Florida, so we didn't have any experience with like you know snow or right. being cold or anything like right. that. But you're going to like a Home Depot parking lot. This was like me and my 
my wife and my at the time and you know it was it wasn't even home depot we went to walmart and we got one of a, a real tree from walmart and we didn't know much but we thought about that experience right so mm -hmm. that was that became a part of our own tradition like going and selecting a tree and even now with mm -hmm. our son we have an artificial one he's trying to go green my wife but <laughs> that's awesome yeah <laughs> no doubt. Green. but we um but you you know every so our plan is like every other year <laughs> to get like a real one um but just still yet going with them and and bringing them that that scene became helped us to form a tradition in our family and the other uh, movie that kind of tied back this is not like per christmas story but like the griswold family christmas mm -hmm. another that scene again mm -hmm. when they're hunting their christmas tree so both of those are part of our like traditional idea of like getting christmas tree and the ralphie thing and but i just have to remember you know i keep my mouth clean with the, my son around of course. <laughs> we don't if you have any mistakes <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's amazing, man. So, you know, um, can I come from the side of a fan and ask questions? Uh, you, yes. Any, any time you want to, for sure. So here's the other part. Um, we, cause you, the character you played yes. was more of like, uh, you know, you, you were the bully, like, mm -hmm. you and Zach were the bully in that movie. Yeah. Um, and I remember I was just like, like little old Ralphie and I was like, man, these guys are messing with this man. He is just leaving alone. Like <laughs> how have you seen from your side of people? Cause you and you guys are all good. Um, you know, it's a movie, but from your side, did you get, um, how was it being a bully and how did people portray you in real life? Um, from that because for a little bit we hated you so i'm just <laughs> yeah so uh for me being a bully was um was kind of easy yeah um because it's kind of how i acted with my friends yeah so my friends growing up in elementary school right because i was in fifth grade i yeah. was 10 years old um when the movie, you were 10 in the movie? i was 10 in the oh, movie yeah, yeah. Okay. so i was in i was in fifth grade and um you know my remember this is back in the 80s okay yeah, yeah. so it's a different time it's a different way of living and i mean remember this is so if you want to say it i'm, I'm a gen x guy you know what i mean <laughs> so back in the day it was you know um get out of the house and don't come back until you know the street lights come on and then I, I don't That's care it. it's got yeah, let the, let the latchkey kids right yeah, yeah. so um <clears throat> We were always just having fun everywhere we go as kids. And so some of us would bully and some of us would be bullied. That's yeah. just the way the streets ran back when I was raised in, in L.A. And so in the San Fernando Valley, which yeah. people may know where that is. It's the San Fernando Valley close to Hollywood uh, area, close to North Hollywood area uh, in, in L.A. County. L.A. County is huge. And so um, being being cast as a bully was fun for me because I got to actually be the person that I wasn't supposed to be. Mm. Right. Because as, as kids, when you grow up, you want to always, and I was always taught, be respectful, treat people the way you want to be treated. And if you show more love than you do anger or hate, then you're going to always get more love than anger or hate back to you. Right. Yeah. There's this thing that, that my, my mom always taught me. And so um, I kind of lived by that code, you know what I mean? So I was always very respectful. I mean, I chivalry was always, even at a kid when I was six, seven, eight years old, I was always trying to help elderly people and help younger people. And and so being a bully in the movie gave me permission to be the, the asshole that I never ha had the ability to do. Yeah. And so um, being a professional actor because I was, I had started acting when I was like three and a half years old, Serious. four years old. Yeah. So when I kind of give you a, a quick history, when we moved from Miami, cause I was born in Miami, when I moved from Miami to LA from my, cause my dad got a job yeah. um, in, in uh, San Fernando Valley back in 1975. Um, we landed in Panora Panorama City, which Panorama City back in that time was just farmland. You know, it was just straight farmlands. Um, and so my sister, was already in the industry here in Miami with uh -huh. a couple of commercials, but now we're moving to Hollywood, right? So now we're in Hollywood. And my sister's this like, I want to be an actress, right? <laughs> and my mom's like, oh my God, here we go. Okay. So, you know, as we, after we got settled in, um, you know, my, my, my sister was like, mom, I really want to be an actress. And so she got a manager and took headshots and her first audition, she got the job. So it was literally not a difficult, uh, seeking jobs for my sister when, when we were children. Back in those days, Screen Actors Guild, there was only about 60,000 of us actors mm -hmm. in the union. Now there's 
several hundred thousand, yeah. people, close to 900,000 people that are SAG actors. So um, getting jobs was pretty prevalent, right? So the first audition she went on, you know, was like, oh my gosh, she got a movie with Burl Ives, which I'm, Burl Ives is a very famous actor back in the day. Uh, it was a very big production. Big productions back then were 20 million. This was like a $15 million production, yeah. you know what I mean, back in the 70s. And so that kind of opened up the door. So as my mom is taking me as a little baby on her hip to my sister's commercials, I was asked to participate in that, which then gave me the option to become Serious? a Screen Actors Guild. Yeah. So uh, I was three and a half when I did my first job. So it kind of escalated from there and did a lot of sitcoms and commercials, so on and so forth. And so to tie that back in, my sister is the one that got me into the industry. Yeah. Just by chance. Um, so when I got a Christmas story, of course, nobody knew what this was going to be for me. It was just my first actual movie. Yeah. Amazing. I'm actually, I made it, right? So now I'm going to be on the big screen. I made it as an actor and I'm 10 years old and I get to be a bully. <laughs> so... I don't know if you know this, because a lot of people do, some people don't still, is that Grover Dill was actually the main bully. Scott Farkas was supposed to be the sidekick. Oh. So all of Scott Farkas's lines that he speaks in the movie today were Grover Dill. So that's what I read for, was Grover Dill, but it had Scott Farkas's lines. And so what happened was, is I was cast out of LA, Scott Farkas was cast out of Canada, and that disconnect of not seeing us together was not happening. Why? There was no digital nothing. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was like they went and we didn't live people. And if they had a huge recorder to record that audition, they did. If they didn't, everything was live. Like there was no recording of anything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the casting directors and the directors and producers had to be in the room to cast all of the talent. Instead of now how we have this digital age where you can yeah. just record remotely and send it in and they can make a decision from there. So the industry has completely changed with the advancement of technology. So when we got together on set in Cleveland, the director was like, mm. whoa, 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 hold on a second. Let's, let's switch lines. And so Zach and I, Zach Ward is the one yeah. who played Scott Farkas in the movie. Uh, we kind of looked at each other like, you got to be kidding me. I got to learn all these lines. <laughs> I just memorized all these lines. Like I spent days and days and days studying this. And I've, I've, I was off book. Off book basically means that you've memorized everything that you need to know about yeah. your character. And you don't need a script to, to read your lines. So that was the challenge is now everything was switched. So I went from being the main bully to being the toady. Yeah. And that's because of the size difference. So um, acting as the bully in the movie was um, was a lot of fun. Yeah. And I was just, you know, doing my job, just acting like a little punk. <laughs> and I got to tell you that I guess I did it pretty well <laughs> because a lot of people over the experience in my life, right? Because yeah. back in 2006 is when I started doing events, in-person events, and being there for the fans and signing autographs and doing all those. Over the course of the years, I've had thousands of fans like yourself yeah. came to me and said, I hated you. <laughs> oh, my God. You were my nemesis. Like, I, I, I knew you. Like, <laughs> I know exactly who you were in my life. Yeah. So that experience of being a bully has brought a lot of attention, um, and it it kind of it got me a lot of roles as yeah as you know acting as a bully. So oh man, yeah, that's good to kind of kind of get that now. Like um, it, it it's just it's cool to be able to sit down with somebody that's a part of your traditions now, <laughs> and, and to, to to have this convo and to yeah, get some of these things. Uh, and f and it's just as surreal for me as it is for you. Yeah. I mean, I I know that sitting down with Grover Dill in your presence and having a conversation with him is weird, cool, um, awesome all at the same time, and it's it's um it's the same for me. It really is because I get to to hear about your experiences and hear about your traditions and see how this has made a difference in your life. Yeah. So the Christmas story has been a part of your life for yeah. a long time, and then when. All of a sudden, this thing popped up in your life a couple of months ago, yeah. and attached to it was, and, and I'm sure your experience was like, okay, it's another client, cool, you know what I mean? I'm 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 excited about meeting a new client, and what the hell is he have to do with a Christmas story, right? What does that all mean, <laughs> right? <clears throat> so the question that I have for you is, um, the movie being a part of your life, why is it important to you? And then what do you think, like in your heart's heart, what do you think about the podcast of Talking a Christmas Story with the cast? 
Yeah, I think it's, um, I feel that it's needed. So from the the perspective of being, I'll back up with this. I, I just finished a series on, um, on, uh, on Amazon and it's this, uh, um, it's down in Australia. They had three season. Um, it's one of these, uh, I got hooked up on these British movies, man, these British TV shows. So I'm just, yeah, it started with like Doc Martin and got, you know, hooked on all of these. So Doc Martin. Yeah. Literally Doc, Doc Martin, like Doc Martin. No, the no, shoot. no, there's a, there's a doctor. He's oh, a doctor. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Um, but it, so I got like acorn, which is like the, I promise you all ties back together. Um, uh, which is the British version of like a streaming service and Amazon purchased them now and they have them. And so I'm watching the series three seasons. It got done and I'm like, what's next? Mm. And I was really bummed because I really enjoyed that series. And I was mm. like, I'm searching everywhere, just like everybody does. So you go search, you're trying to figure out where's everybody hanging out. Like you can go to, you know, Twitter or X and you try to find if people are commenting, but it, that dies off after like a month or two, you know, mm. the, the people can, the rumors about season four, but there's nothing, it's, it's done. But what I like about this is like the Christmas story, like it was forever ago, the, you have the, you have the tradition of the every, mo every year you watch the movie, but there's still something about it that I want, you, you want to gather. And that's why I think the podcast is cool and the community, the subsequent community with it, because when it's done, it's not done because now you can go and connect with other people and hear their stories in the actual Facebook group. But then you also can watch the podcast and you can connect with the guests and some of the, 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 the some of the guests you guys bring on, which are cast members and hear their side of the story and hear their experience and how this impacted their life. And we get a chance to see them from a different perspective and seeing you from a different perspective. Now, like getting a chance to know you over the past several months, Yano isn't a bully. Yano is Yano. It's Yano's cool. And uh, he'll, if I'm late to a meeting, he's going to tell me I need to do some uh, burpees. <laughs> burpees. <laughs> <laughs> so like, but you know, I get a chance to know mm. Yano. And, and I think that's where that the, the podcast becomes so cool now because you're getting interested introduced to from a different perspective so it doesn't die and it's not like you know some of these things they have like uh they have a shelf life and what i love about a podcast it's not like i'm only listening to this at christmas i'm listening to this year round mm -hmm. because every week there's a different story of somebody else like you had that you're you know bringing on people who are like cast members that we didn't know about you had on uh, what you call it last a couple weeks ago when you talked about the lamp that the leg lamp right. like that was just again that's Ruben free, Ruben free. Yeah. like yeah. that was just pretty huge and learn i learned some secrets there from that one i didn't know right. clue about yeah. about like the design of the you know the lamp and that there was no authentic lamp and that you guys are working on that like all those things was it still makes it real and there's not a lot of shows that do that and that's why i think the podcast is dope and i think that makes it um it makes it people want to watch it and continue to watch it and it's yeah the shelf life is is forever just like the movie you know what i mean i do yeah and to to add on to that that's <clears throat> one of the core essences as to why we need to continue this legacy yeah because just like you felt kind of empty the movie has been around out for decades yeah right and people watch it every year i watch it every year i watch it every year but then that's it yeah i mean they can they could do things like go to an event or go to the house or do things like that but there's really nothing tying them in to, to make it feel complete yeah and you know i i think that the thank you for saying that because i have a feeling that a lot of people feel the same way having this podcast gives the ability to continue the legacy having the free community where now people that love the movie and share their collectibles and share their passion for it has the ability to do that in a safe place yeah so you know um and it's it's not like some t some stuff when i remember this guy started the lost podcast like years ago when lost first came mm -hmm. out was and you know the fans would get together and start talking about lost you remember that sure that was a big it was a big thing. i don't remember the podcast but the but I remember this lost. dude started it and it was just like okay. And but it, was a, it hit a community, yeah. But it wasn't anyone from Lost. Was oh. a part of it. it was just a fan. But this again, it's almost as if it's the real continuation of the movie, even right. though it's not. You're not connected to TNT, like or Turner. But this is you're the cast. You yeah. are the people from mm -hmm. it. So you get the you get real information from the horse's mouth, and that's why I think they make the podcast again a little bit more different. Yeah. You don't find a lot of shows that they have a podcast and you have the actual cast members that are part of that podcast. Again, they may have a hired actor or a third party mm -hmm. person that talks about it at interviews or somebody from it, but not necessarily the actual people. Yeah. Um, 
And that makes it, again, gives it a little bit more of that unique level. So one, it's the podcast lets you continue it, but two, the podcast lets you continue it with the real people. Um, so all that makes that legacy, makes it exciting, makes it fun. It does, big time. And I kind of want to circle that back around yeah. to when you first had the first exposure to Emmanuel, who was my business partner, Emmanuel yeah. Soba. Big um, shout out, Emmanuel. <laughs> yeah, for, for sure. And because then, you know, just to give you a little quick history as to how this actually, you know, transpired over the last four year period of time. Yeah. Um, because this is something that we've been working on for, for years. And um, <clears throat> so when I met Emmanuel um, back in 2019, um, I hired him as a business coach in my fitness business since, you know, my my history is in fitness and wellness and, and nutrition and all that fun stuff. Um, and I hired him as, as a business coach. And about three months into the relationship, he called me one day and said, like, why didn't you tell me, man? And I was like, <laughs> my heart sank. I was like, what did I do wrong now? You know what I mean? I'm always trying to make this business better. What did I do? And he's like, you're Grover Dill from a Christmas story. Like, bro, why didn't you tell me? And, and you know, I'm I'm this kind of dude that um, I, I just don't go around telling people. Yeah. You know what I mean? That I'm Grover Dill from a Christmas story. That's that's something that is a very important part of my past. It is my past. Um, and this guy, Emmanuel, kind of brought it to my presence because mm -hmm. he felt kind of like what you felt was there's this there's this open circle that's not yeah. complete there's this emptiness that he wanted to be able to meet the other cast like he was so excited about meeting Grover Dill he wanted the opportunity to meet everybody and my response to him was the only thing that I knew was you have to wait for an event like we may do an event in your town we may not you might have to fly uh -huh. out and meet everybody you may not right and he was like yeah I'm gonna fix that so uh he came back in like four <laughs> or five days and he said let's start a free Facebook group there's nothing out there I've done my research yet yeah right and I'm like okay like I, I have I had no idea the snowball effect that would yeah that would take place um, because for me, it was just the hobby, like literally, okay, cool. You know, Christmas is Christmas story has been in my life, my whole life. Um, I know that there are tens of thousands, if not millions, actually there's 55 million fans. Cause we see all of the stats on how many people watch the movie every single year. And so, um, I was like, million every year. yeah, Dang. yeah. So there's a big, there's a big fan base Yeah, and, um, we're just scratching the surface, you know, four years into it. Yeah. So, um, so he was like, let's do this. And I was like, you know, okay. <laughs> I'll see what you come up with. I'm I'm here. I'm I'm the guy. I'm yeah. Grover Dill. You know, I'll, I'll be the face. So it just kind of um, you know, it snowball effect. Yeah. And we created a, a free Facebook group and then we did a private inner circle group, which is where people have more access to the cast. And we're doing a lot of extracurricular activity with that small group of very dedicated fans. So this is why we have created the Legacy Crest Immersion Experience, is because now we have the opportunity to look at what people's family traditions are, uh, what they currently do with their family members, what and how this movie A Christmas Story has intertwined in their life, how important it is to them, what is their collectible base, like, you know, how how intense have they gotten with this movie? Um, and so we just developed this whole immersion experience around creating these free gift boxes when you become a member to our inner circle membership group. And so what happens is now we've developed this whole scheme of like scavenger hunts and, and crossword puzzles and decoder pin, you know, um, <laughs> unveilings. Like we've created this whole nostalgic experience yeah. around what the movie has done for them, but we're taking it to the next level of creating more family traditions. And in my personal experience, I wish I would have had that when I was a child, you know yeah. what I mean? Because in your experience with what Christmas did for you is it created something that you never had before. And that created bonds in your life that are, I mean, I don't know how close you guys were before or after, but I can tell you that that specific experience you had with your brother created a whole different bond mm. that now you guys share and you'll share that forever. And what this is going to do is the same thing for families where they can now create new family traditions with their kids and give them more activities to do and, and have, you know, kids get off their iPads and do more things with their family. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, to go on a family trip and go Christmas tree uh, hunting and do these little <laughs> things together that, that those little moments in life is what is really important, right? It's not yeah. about just 
the presence, like even your experience, it wasn't about not knowing what your presence were. It wasn't about, you know, um, uh, waking up in the morning and going down with that anticipation and not knowing what you're going to get and wishing for the things that you wished for that hopefully we're going to get there. I mean, your excitement was just going to the store and buying your presence and then wrapping your presence and then knowing what you're going to get. But it was the whole process is what created that enthusiasm. It created that, that, that excitement, that love, because literally it comes from uh, uh, an energy or vibration from love. And so <clears throat> that experience is something that we created and circling that back around to why this is so important is because we as the cast and we're all in alignment with this uh even Warner Brothers like everybody is in alignment that you know the production the people that own the rights I mean everybody is in alignment with wanting to do everything we can because we have a responsibility to keep this legacy alive yeah and it's not just about us it's about Gene Shepard who was the writer of the movie and the legacy of his life and helping us get more exposure with the movie in his life so that his family can know that his legacy is being carried on. Bob Clark, who was the director, the yeah. same thing. You know what I mean? It's this, it's uplifting this one movie that Bob Clark and Gene Shepard had a 12 year journey to make this movie happen. They were turned down many times. Imagine working on a project for 12 years and being told no after a year, after a year, after a year, after a year. But they that. never, yeah, a lot of people don't realize that. So what you watched on the screen not only took 12 to 13 years to, to even get to the point to be funded, but then it took the time to record it and cast it and edit it and show it on the big screen where it didn't even get a good rating. You know what I mean? Like when it was released, it wasn't really that great. Yeah. And there was only a few people um, who were Gene Shepard's close knit circles who pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed Ted, Ted Turner um, to put this on TV because it was a classic Christmas movie. Yeah. They just knew that the essence of what this story was about was every kid's dream around Christmas or creating traditions and, and you know, the, the special relationships that they have with their families and, and seeing how mom protects from dad, but seeing how the unconditional love from dad actually shows up in the end. Yeah. You know and I mean, all these different types of nuances around the movie is why this is so important for us as the cast, for the podcast, for the free group, for the, for the VIP, or I should say the inner circle community. You know, we do this because we love the movie. We do this because we want to carry the legacy on for my kids uh because actually i'm i'm the only one uh, out of the cast members that actually has a child besides peter oh, and serious? actually rd has children too so yeah. peter billingsley who played ralphie has children um uh schwartz uh in in the movie who is the triple dog yeah yeah right he was the one he was the provoker you know what i mean to push flick to put his tongue for the flagpole um he's also got children yeah. you know what i mean so those two are very busy in their life. You know what I mean? They're, yeah. they're very successful. They're producers, directors, screenwriters. Like they are in the business still. And God bless their hearts for being able to do that. Uh, but they have kids. Yeah. And, you know, solidifying this movie as something that I can help with is huge for me. Because I do have a child um, who is actually 28. Now he's not a child anymore. He's a grown you man. Year old? I, it's I, crazy. I, I, <laughs> I know. Trust me, I know. But when he was 10. Yeah. People would look at him and be like, "That's Grover Dill." Yeah, <laughs> like that's literally Grover. Dill. Like his friends thought that he was Grover Dill in the movie yeah. when they watched it with him when he was nine, ten years old. So, um, I I agree with you, and I thank you for expressing that because yeah. um, it is an important thing. It's a responsibility that we all carry to to make this thing um, much bigger than we are because it already is. Well, it's dope, man. We're excited, and I'm grateful to be able to be here and be a part of this process. Yeah, me too. Me too, because when you were invited into the circle, I know that we have, you know, me and me, Manuel, we have a lot of private conversations about who we're going to do business with. Yeah. Um, and because uh, your energy, I'm going to just be honest with you about you as a business yeah. person and somebody that I don't even know, uh, because I happen to be in town down in Florida because I drove down to actually visit my mom. Yeah. 
Uh, you he didn't know, come to see me. I he didn't came come to, to, <laughs> came to see his mom. Yeah. Just so so <laughs> I drove down to Florida because I I get the opportunity to see my mom more often. Yeah. Because my mom is the reason why I did this movie. Uh, we can go all the way back to the origin. My sister was the reason why I got into show business. My mom is the reason why I got this movie. Yeah. And um, so, you know, she's 92 years old. And she's, you know, I mean, how much longer do we have on the planet? You know yeah. what I mean? Or in this this dimension, this realm, whatever you want to say. Um, so I get to spend more time with her while she's still here and she's still sharp as a whip, yeah. you know, but her body's 92. You know what I mean? So, um, if you don't take care of your body, you don't realize when you're in your seventies, eighties, your nineties, you're still living in the same body. You know I mean? Yeah. We can't just change out transmissions. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no warranty on that shit. And so, no power train uh, <laughs> so, you know, when I, when I was on my way down here, of course, in my mind, I'm thinking I need to do a podcast with my mom, man. I need yeah. to have that important part of her life and my life. Me being 52 years old now, it's weird to say, because even she asked me yesterday, she's like, how old are you again? <laughs> Mama, 52. She's like, oh my God, I remember I was 52. That's so weird. <laughs> That's not the same person I remember in the mirror. <laughs> so, um, having the opportunity to come down to a podcast with her and then lining up with you for me is, is an amazing experience. Yeah. Why? Because it's about the bigger picture. And when, um, Emmanuel met you, he loved your energy. Um, a young entrepreneur working with his family and a huge Christmas story fan. And he was yeah. super excited, you know, about that. So when, of course, when I met you, it was, it was an amazing experience for you to bring that nostalgia back to work with a Christmas story. But for me, because I know that the energy is there yeah. um, and the dedication, the passion, the love for what you do is exactly what we wanted to be able to take this podcast to the next level. So you're the synergist as to why, you know, we're here with talking a Christmas story with the cast. Oh, appreciate that very much. Hey, man. means a lot. I, I yeah, for means. sure. Thank you, man. hundred percent. Looking okay. forward to the future. That's for sure. Let's go. So Let's all go. you guys keep your eyes out for the podcast, talking a Christmas story with the cast, because we've got episodes galore coming. We've got celebs coming. We've got all kinds of really fun stuff coming up for this podcast. Any secrets you can tell them or you can't tell any secrets? In that? Yeah. Well, um, secrets remain secrets because <laughs> you don't tell secrets. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I, I can say that, you know, we've, we've got a really nice lineup yeah. and I'm really excited where we're taking this um, when it comes to the podcast. And remember, this is all about the fans. For us, it's about giving the fans the opportunity to get in here and listen and learn and laugh and cry. And even when we talk to fans on the podcast, it's the opportunity for them to bring their uh, their life, their love for this movie to the to the forefront. So, um, again, thanks, Donald. Appreciate you, man. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, folks, that just about wraps up this week's episode of Talking a Christmas Story with the cast. There is a very heartfelt thank you to our wonderful guest today, Donald Kelly, for sharing his remarkable journey from the sunlit shores of Jamaica to the snowy streets of the movie. What I loved about this conversation was getting to talk about how something as simple as a film that you love can help keep you connected to both your past and your future. This is the power of storytelling. It creates intricately woven connections and bonds too strong to break. It's these shared memories and experiences that make life truly rich and magical. We hope you try to keep that spirit of connection alive all year round, just like we do. As we've learned today, it's not just about the traditions that are passed down to us, but the new ones that we create and we cherish with those that we love. This is why the A Christmas Story family has developed something brand new, something that will add to the traditions that you already have. It's called the A Christmas Story Immersion Experience. Now imagine this. You're not just listening to your favorite Christmas movie in the background. You are actually going to be interacting with the cast, following a scavenger hunt, unveiling secret messages together as a family, creating lifelong memories and traditions that can be passed down to future generations. Weaving these rich, beloved moments into your home enhances the experiences of family love, security, laughter, forgiveness, and changes the fabric of how the family unit experiences each other. This is the magic that we bring to you from A Christmas Story Family. 
And what makes this even more extraordinary is on December 16, 2023, we marked the 40th anniversary of A Christmas Story with the largest events ever held for the movie, right in its birthplace of Hammond, Indiana. The evening before this grand celebration, we organized a very special dinner featuring cast members such as Peter Billingsley, who played Ralphie, Hammond's mayor, Erwin's willing, Gene Shepard's accountant, and a close friend, and a producer on A Christmas Story Christmas, the board members from the Indiana Welcome Center, and many other esteemed guests. Now, during this exclusive dinner, we revealed our specially crafted gift boxes. These weren't just ordinary boxes. They were designed to resemble the iconic leg lamp crate and were filled with major awards that even the old men would envy. Each box valued at over $2,500 honored the film's legacy and was presented to our special guests to commemorate the significant milestone. We only created 28 of these unique boxes, making them incredibly rare and coveted. But that's just the beginning because now, for the very first time ever, we are offering you the chance to get one of these exclusive boxes for free and to make it even more historic. For the first time ever in the 40 year history of the movie, we're recreating the original leg lamp design as seen in the movie, an exact replica, as this has never been done before. Our partner, Ruben Free, the original creator of the leg lamp, still has the original sketches and specs and design and is going to bring it back to life for you. And it also comes in that box for free. Ruben Freed, the cast, and I have been working on this for months, and now it's time for you to discover its beauty. We invite you to check it out, give us your honest feedback, and join us on this incredible journey. Trust me, you don't want to miss out on this. Go to www.thechristmasstoryfamily.com forward slash free box to find out more. And join our Christmas story movement with the cast, become part of our extended family, and a guardian to the Christmas story legacy. I shot my eye out. You'll shoot your eye out.